The Mark Daisy Show is brought to you over Broadband Box Office Network, produced at VK Media Studios, Pat Maruki, producer and director. We are archived on Facebook and iTunes and live every third Wednesday of the month. And that's the way it was 200 years ago today. This is Walter Conkright reminding you not to forget to remember that the... Oops. Con- just reading some archives. <laughs> not really. I was, just, I was kidding. I was kidding you. I'm kidding. I'm a kidder. Welcome to the Mark Daisy... Ow! <laughs> it's a semi-professional show already. Isn't it incredible? Uh, the Mark Daisy Show. I'm Mark Daisy. This is my show. And I almost didn't make it here today. I, I was late, actually, because my alarm didn't go off. I wake up in the morning to ABC Radio. Yeah, that's my alarm. It's my alarm because I'm so alarmed with what I am forced to listen to for, you know, like, I don't know, like a maximum of somewhere between 30 seconds and a minute before I rip myself out of my nice, cozy, scrinkly, warm, comfy, la-la, wonderland sleep bed to walk across the room and smash the top of the uh, off button on, on the radio. Because if for no other reason, and there is none, uh, I, I want to thank uh, WABC Radio for waking me the fuck up. Because <laughs> I can't, it's too, it's really, I, there, and when they talk and it's, sort of absolutist, you know, like, because they're scared that if they're not right, the end of the world might be near. W, you know, it used to be W-A Beatles, see, remember? Yeah, 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 all you need is love, but I'm glad they got rid of all those guys and replaced them with corporate DJs. However, that being said, for the last, I don't know, last year, I've been driving into New York to to do some business. Well, a couple of months ago, I was driving past Rush Limbaugh on the way into uh, into the uh, Lincoln Tunnel there, and he had such a cool car. Is it El Dorado or uh, LXR or whatever? It's it was really black. It was cool. It was, it was groovy. So I mean, yeah, it's it's Rush Limbaugh. But anyway, he's got a cool car. And I have a cool car too. So I figured maybe in some spiritually strange other you know, uh, reflective universe, we had something in common. Well, at least. So, uh, as I'm driving by, I give him this. Uh, you, know, you know, like the thumbs up thing. I, I, I hope that he didn't take it to mean that, that I, I agreed with, with him that, that the Nazis have taken over our banks or anything like that. Not necessarily that fear produces absolutism. <laughs> or anything like that. I mean, that could never happen, right? I mean, really, I, I mean, except for maybe in Germany or Uruguay or Paraguay or Argentina. But, I mean, the banks would never be taken over here, right, by Nazis. <laughs> that couldn't happen, right? It couldn't. There would be, like, no way people would be talking about it and everything. Would be, people would kind of know that that would, would go down in America because, you know, I mean, and, I mean, if it were true that... Uh, it would take anybody three or four months to refinance their house. Three or four months for a home mortgage to be refinanced. I don't think you would have to wait that long because they send you stuff that you're like pre-qualified and all that. So I, they know what they're talking about. <sighs> On which uh, you have never missed a payment in 10 freaking years. And a bank would have known more about me than the NSA. And that would never happen here, of course, because my credit card company would never share any information about me with anybody, you know, or give my email out. They wouldn't possibly do that. I know that because on paragraph uh, 204 of of Section 7 uh, of the uh, uh, Banking Code of Ethics, it says uh, uh, that uh, they can't share uh, any of my information. It was said 15 years ago. it, It said so. So they know me. They they absolutely know me. I could walk into a brand. They wouldn't because somehow those laws didn't apply though to the bank 15 years ago when they gambled away grandpa's pension on a hedge fund. But nobody was watching them then. But I digress. Rush Limbaugh's ride was sweet. 
Page two. <laughs> I write this because I believe that Wall Street lost it and now Main Street foots it. Write it down. It could be the next big bumper sticker. I don't know. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not good at being noble, but it, but it doesn't take much to see that the problems of little people don't amount to a hill of beans in this crazy world. Someday you'll understand that. <laughs> and then just yesterday, I was in New York. I was at a restaurant. I was sitting next to the uh, uh, Bill Ritter, the, uh, the news, uh, eyewitness news guy. For really no other simple reason than the fact that his face is on TV and I didn't want him to misunderstand me like I agreed with Rush when I went like this and only to be appreciative of his car, but not really knowing that much about Bill. I just winked at him because he was on TV and I know he had a lot of makeup on and he was at the table uh, next to me. So being that we're in the same industry and all, I you know, thought maybe we're at the same restaurants too. And he had a tie on, and I have one as well. So, there. I think I'm starting to look like Donald Fagan or something. <laughs> Wait. I'm less than the night fly. Hello, Baton Rouge. No, it's not, it's not true at all. But what really kills me about ABC News, since we're talking about news and the people in it, is the fact that the morning national broadcast on, on, on ABC... It's so weird. I mean, they've got like a crazy, crazy bunch of people through a window in the back of when they're announcing, like George Stephanopoulos. A hundred people. Well, this is my imi imitation of George Stephanopoulos, by the way. BTW. A hundred people were killed and dragged through the streets of the Egyptian capital of Cairo last night. Blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And there's like 17 people dressed in like sweatpants and, and I Love New York's T-shirts in back of them. <laughs> going like that and it's a hello paging peter jennings help you know where's edward ardmer oh, wouldn't you need him i mean what wtf man it's a national news program is like no one in charge or, or seems to think that that's like a freak show in, 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 i mean there's a hundred people walking through the streets of cairo don like as if perhaps maybe we, but that would never happen in my show. Let me tell you that right now. On the other hand, <laughs> I asked him to wave 17 times. He just ran through. Now, ah, uh, oh, it's a copyright. You know, Don invented those little flags that go on the back of trucks, the red ones, so that when they wind up going through your windshield and the flag is like there, they go, and I'll say, go. Thank goodness I know the guy who invented them, and they wouldn't have want me to have had that sitting next to me, but I do, and since I know him, I thought I'd say so. <laughs> Thank you for that walkthrough. But, oh, my God, reality blur. There's, like, guys in back going, you know, there's people dying in Egypt. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Oh, I've been to the Statue of Liberty today. I, I, I don't know. The whole freaking concept is, in, is incompatible with the reality that people are laughing and waving in, in the background. But there I am winking to Bill Ritter. You know, I don't know, for Christ's sake. So, Now, I love Charlie Rose, okay? I love Charlie Rose. I love him, love him, love him, love him, love that guy. I love Charlie Rose. But he needs some rest, doesn't he? Have you seen him lately? God, I mean, his eyes are red. He, yeah, Charlie, you got to lay down. You got to lay down for a while, man. I mean, I'm glad he's doing it. And he's doing it right. But you got to get some sleep. I mean, give it to Cokie Roberts every once in a while. Well, that's all I'm saying. Take a nap, man. Get some Z's. We're all in there with you. <laughs> ah, did you think that maybe you'd want your lips back? Well, we can get your lips back anytime you want. We got your lips back right here. Let's, uh, let's roll that lips back commercial. You can get your lips back anytime you want, just by standing by. You lost your lips due to an accident, injury, or carelessness of a physician? Have you lost your lips due to poor grooming habits, perhaps an insensitive remark from a friend, or simply the onset of middle age? Well, go lipless no longer. 
No, this is not a cure, but until there's a cure, there's lips back. Yes, lips back. A refined clear petroleum gel that looks and feels like real lips. If you've lost your lips for any reason at all, don't be embarrassed ever again. Now you can enjoy fuller, smoother lips with Lips Back. Uh, I, I was on vacation fishing. One day I was walking by the lake, and I don't know, uh, my lips just fell off there. So they just fell off. I, I bought some lips back, and uh, nobody could tell that I didn't have my real lips again. It's a great product. I was, uh, I was driving down the road. I had my 18-wheeler there. I was somewhere out there, I think in the Texas Panhandle. I'd been out for a couple of days. And uh, I don't know, I pulled over to take a nap. I woke up, and uh, my lips are gone. I'm thinking, hey, this thing, this, you know, this looks. So I stopped in a you know, convenience store, and they had, they had lips back right there in Texas. And I went out there. Uh, nobody knew I didn't have it out. They, they look and feel like real lips, and I love, I think it's a great product. I recommend it. Yeah, yeah, now you see, I was, uh, I, uh, I got, I got a pick, uh, okra, you know, and turnips. I was out in the field, pick them up, you know, and my lips got caught in a big column by it. It just got ripped right the heck off. It was an accident. It wasn't my fault. My lawyer was driving the columbine at the time. And my lips just got sucked right up. Ripped right the heck off there, you know. And, uh, so, uh, uh, Bob Joe ran, ran, ran down to, to the ranch house where he had some lips back. Put it right on. Look. You can hardly tell ain't my lips, but they look and feel like real lips. And that's what's important. Lips back. I, I, it's a product I highly recommend, too. <laughs> Observe these before and after photos of real lips back users. Soon you'll be saying, again, it's a great product. Lives back. It's not for everyone, but then again, what is? <laughs> yeah. Available at Kmart, Rite Aid, James Wayne, Genevieve, ShopRite, True Value, and all Dwayne Reed stores. Lips back. Isn't it time you got your lips back? Now there's Mega Lips for those who want even more fuller lips, wider coverage. Yes, there's only one Mega Lips. Ketchup bottles, ketchup bottles. I'm here to talk about your ketchup bottles. What, really? Ketchup bottles? Who designed those things? I mean, seriously. I mean, somebody did actually design them, right? Someone like, you know, all right, we got ketchup. That's good. We got the ketchup, and now we got we to uh, put them in a bottle, and then people got to use it. How can we make it as difficult as possible? <laughs> Not only did they, like, start with the little tiny things, okay, but then they put, like, a thing that you, and then there's, like, a, even, like, a little, a little tinier things you could squirt, and, and it just gets stuck up with the tomato. Really? Really? Did they design that? I mean, somebody thought about it, and you can't even get the goddamn ketchup out? <laughs> Are they protecting us? I think they're protecting us from maybe using too much ketchup at once. Sure, you don't want to be caught with, you know, too much ketchup on your plate at any given moment. Okay, we're going to make a, we're going to make a, a wide bottom here and uh, a little skinny top with like maybe something to restrict the flow. Does that work? Yes, Bob, that's completely accurate. I think we'll put it into production now for the next 100 years. <laughs> <clears throat> They want to protect us. I know that they want to protect us. And, that, and that's great. 
It's good to know that you're being protected. You should only hope that that will be the same protection agency that would prohibit the use of those tiny little freaking plastic stingy things that are attached to pieces of new clothing. Did I just spit? Yeah, I'm spitting mad. <laughs> really, they, they, they gouge your neck or, or, or they pierce your hip or, or they poke your calf? Gouging your neck, piercing your hip or poking your calf would be acceptable if I was in a slaughterhouse. Any of those three things. But not when you buy a new, like, shirt or a pair of socks, you know. Get them, please. The protection agency that has looked over the uh, saving us from too much ketchup <laughs> the phenomenon, look into this plastic thing, okay? There's a lot going on here that doesn't, you know, it doesn't meet the eye. It doesn't meet the eye. It's under the cover of darkness. It's incognito. It's incommunicado. It's, uh, they're paying cash, uh, cover of darkness. You know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Page four. <laughs> Vacation Bible School. Really? Vacation Bible School. Um, really? I mean, is that an oxymoron? Sort of like Army Intelligence? Vacation Bible. You know, you see it. It's written on sides of the things that, you know, the the churches, and I love the churches. I, I lo I, you gotta love the churches because the churches do a lot of good things. One of them, however, is not vacation Bible school because when you're seven or 12, it's, I don't, for me, I'm thinking, I don't know. But I mean, unless you're like the guy on channel three, yeah, he's, he looks like a school teacher. He's got the glasses on and uh, shirt and tie. Kind of looks like me, only you know, less handsome. <laughs> God, Sooks, I'm sorry, God, I didn't mean what I just said. Yeah, and you know, well, of course, she has been mad at me lately because I, I made fun of her earrings last week. Anyway, Vacation Bible School. I'm, I'm sorry. The guy's name, are you ready, who, who, like, who does this like Vacation Bible School thing on Channel 3? Wait for it. Here it comes. I swear to you, this is his name. Les Feldick. I swear to God. Look it up. <laughs> All right. Vacation Bible schoolers. Thumbs up this week for my pal who stopped his car and ripped up the Obama Nazi placards that were held up by these misled individuals who were pounding around the pavement of an abandoned parking lot. He just stopped his car, walked up to them, took the placards, ripped them up, got back in his car, and drove away. They were like, you know, Obama's a Nazi. <laughs> they, he, I don't even know if he's a banker. You know what I mean? And so, and so, to my, to my friend. Anyway, oh, do I smell something? Oh. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, I think I do smell something. It's it's like I have a I have a mega sniff, you know. Did you know that? Yeah. to you, the consumer. Yes, Mega Sniff, the super smeller used by secret government agencies for years, declassified through the Freedom of Information Act, and now available over the counter. Watch this incredible demonstration of the power of new Mega Sniff. This man, secretly taped and wearing special blind glasses, has trouble identifying everyday objects through their odor. Watch. That's uh, a hippopotamus. Okay, smell. That's uh, 1943 Chrysler. Okay, smell. That's uh, uh, Ricky Lake, am I right? Okay, smell. Oh, yeah, that's uh, Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, uh, no, wait, uh, Abba. Okay. Smell. 
That's uh, a poorly short movie. Definitely not. But now watch after we've surgically implanted new Mega Sniff. Watch this incredible demonstration. See, it's just incredible. It only takes a moment to attach surgically implanted by our board certified implant specialists. Wow, and it didn't hurt at all. An apple. An orange. A grape. All right, that's a cut. Male, approximately 35 years old. Owns a dog. Dog eats a uh, alpo. No way to Purina Hardy meal. Uh, let's see, your girlfriend wears Chanel number no. five. For lunch yesterday you had uh, ham and Swiss. Today you had uh, Liverwurst. Your favorite movie is uh, Casablanca. You have attention deficit disorder. Your sister is anorexic. She always wanted to be a baseball player, but when she was... Ten, she saw her first stock car race. After that, college was out of the question. Now available to you, the consumer. Yes, Mega Snip. You've seen the super demonstration. Now get the super smeller used by secret government agencies. Now declassified and available to you over the counter. Ask for Mega Sniff. Or call 1-900-STINKER to avoid handling and delivery charges and taxes. Don't forget, new Mega Sniff available to you. Ask for it by name. Your father was a shop steward at a Poughkeepsie meat packing plant. Am I right? Am I right? I don't know, just kind of, you know, I had nothing to do, and I thought that I would, so, I, get your own show, get your, <laughs> okay, there's an abyss, under your car seat, are you aware of this, <laughs> I'm aware, was this the ABC Morning News, <laughs> with George Stephanopoulos, my friend Don again. Don McLean, who invented uh, duct tape, as you know. And that flag thing that goes on the back of cars, or trucks, I should say, before your car goes into the front uh, where you shouldn't be if the thing is right next to you. That means that you probably hurt yourself. Where was I? Oh, yeah, car seats. There's an abyss. 
underneath your car seat. A uh, uh, freaking abyss. There's coins down there, gems, bars of gold, your old bootlegging still from college. It's there. A baby holding an apple. <laughs> Give me the Cobra Jewel. It belongs to my people. What's that? It's underneath your car seat? Oh, okay, I'll wait. <laughs> what is that? I mean, somebody invented that. It's, it's a black hole. It's inaccessible. In many vehicles, you can't even put your hand down here. You put your hand and you rip off your skin. You're trying to get your skinny phone. You're, you're ripping the blood pouring out of your hand. It's... Yes, Mr. Daisy. Uh, we'll have your, uh, your car seat removed in about three days. Is there anything that you would like us to get while you're there? Yes, my life is underneath there, especially like when you're driving and you're going over a bump and you drop your cell phone and it's underneath the car forever. <laughs> and so, do you really need that exercise bicycle in your basement? <laughs> in your in-house gym? Well, I mean, if you need one, just drive around your neighborhood for five minutes. Because it's my contention that we should form like some sort of like bicycle exercise machine forum where there's actually only maybe two exercise bicycles that you, we just trade them, you know, go from house to house and give them and, and move them and then put them in the trash and then let the next guy take it and, and put him in the trash. There's like a million of these bikes. I guess people are like sitting there, you know, at like five o'clock in the morning and go... I can't sleep anymore. I don't I don't know what to do. I'm watching television. Oh. Great. I could use some exercise and I don't even have to go outside. Best part about it is if I don't need it, I can put it out on my front stoop. <laughs> we just had two bikes and let them make the rounds. I mean, I'm sorry. There are a lot, a lot of people exercising in their house with that over an extended period of time. So, you know, why just cater to the two people that really are doing it. Okay. Next point of interest. <laughs> point of is like on the maps you get from New Jersey. Points of interest. Cape May? High point. The rest is all history. Right? Right in there. No, I mean really uh, oh, why would anyone make their bed into hospital corner sheets? I have some time. Go ahead. Think about it. Think about it. Really, because I'm thinking that when people grow up, they're either walking like this, or they're, they're walking like that, or they're walking like, uh, why? Because their mom or dad tucked in their hospital sheets, and, and then when you're sleeping at, at night, you're all, the only thing your feet can do is this, or that, or this. So you're going to grow up doing that, unless you have the freedom of an untucked sheet. In which case, you could kind of make up your own walk. So, so there's that. <laughs> Isn't it great to get a Facebook message from a dear old friend that you miss, you know, and you haven't seen in, I don't know, five or ten years, and it's an invitation to play Lucky Slots? <laughs> I love it, man. You know, you know John Frankenheimer. Oh, John Frankenheimer. He found me on Facebook. I remember we used to go out drinking beers at the lake and, you know, we'd hide the Playboy books in the garage and and then we got arrested by the FBI. No, but anyway, but then you look at it and then there's John Frankenheimer and he's like, John Frankenheimer invites you to play Lucky Slots. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, although Facebook is great. I love it because we're on it, and we do a lot of it, and we do more of it than anyone else in the industry. How do we do it? How do we do it? How do we do it? Volume. No, Facebook is great. I, I do love Facebook. Uh, but uh, really, it's like some guys like using it to play lucky slots and then sending it to all your friends you ever possibly met in your entire life. I don't know. In the meantime, I got thinking about this. What if we had tails? Really? I mean, I think in the evolution of things, if you believe in evolution, 
Not like those climatologist people, you know, who are being paid by the... Uh, who are the climatologists being paid by? Oh, that's right, the universities. I'm sorry, the people who don't believe in global warming, they're the ones that are being paid by the coal companies in Exxon. I got it, I got it. But wouldn't it be interesting in terms of evolution if, you know, uh, that in our evolutionary days we kept the tails? We just like, you know, like somewhere down, like after Adam or maybe before Adam or, you know, his friend Claire, who was actually the first wife. But, you know, they got like a secret divorce in Haiti. It wasn't called Haiti then. Long story. But anyway, um, so before then, maybe, uh, you know, Adam would say, you know, I was thinking uh, we should probably uh, keep the tails. I kind of like them. They sway. They move. They're great. I love them. What do you think, Claire? And she said, it doesn't look good on you. Get rid of the tail or that's it. And, of course, we all know what happened. Eve came along, said the same thing. No, wait a minute. I told the story backwards. Wait, wait. Checking, hello, testing. It doesn't matter. If we had tails, it would be great. I'm thinking. But except if you're like a bad guy. Because if then, like when you get when you get pulled aside and stuff, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, this is, uh, the cop asks you, wind down your window, please. Right? And then, like, you would, your tail would be out here and be going, uh, yes, officer. And he'd be saying, um, have you been drinking? And your tail would go under your legs. <laughs> Or if, if he'd say, are you happy? Yeah, yeah, but yeah no. Uh, you know, it's a give. It's a tell, they say. In gambling, uh, they say, it's a tell. It's like something that somebody does, you know, to let the other guy who's gambling know that they're lying. But so if we had tails, we'd probably have to have, like, tail suppressors or things like that. Because people would know how you were feeling. And it's not good to let people know how you're feeling all the time. You know, it's good to hide and pretend. And, you know, because you gotta got to protect yourself. You know, suppose some ketchup fell on, on your plate or you're getting stabbed by, like, plastic things in your neck. Sure, you, sure, you're upset, but you can't show it. You know, so you'd have to have, like, like maybe custom tail suppressors by Gucci or something like that. I don't know, I'm just saying. But guys like, you know, O.J. Simpson. Uh, did you do it, O.J.? <laughs> have you been happy in prison? Yeah, it was just, you'd know. You'd know. There's a point to that. Oh, yeah. Have you noticed? I'm not sure, but I think... I think that uh, police car headlights are getting prettier, aren't they? They're like lavender these days. Aren't they like... They're like, they're like bright cherry red and lavender. They're, they used to be like red, like red, like fire engine red, like... like it wasn't... It was like, with like, um, you know, Broderick Crawford pulling you over. 10-4, 10-4, where you been? What's going on? Hey. And, but, and then they turned into the woo-woo-woo, and then they were blue for a while. Nice blue, you know, a deep sea blue or whatever. But now they're kind of like lavender, like, like you look in the rearview mirror and you're thinking, and, uh, and, and it's like the, they're pretty. So you, you, it's like, would you mind stopping? Would you mind pulling over if you possibly could? If, if you have the time, uh, sir, please pull over. I, I wouldn't mind having a chat with you. See my beautiful lavender lights and my cherry red uh, mix? It, uh, it creates sort of a nice violet hue, don't you think? So if you have the time, within the next three or four miles, if you feel like maybe just pulling off to the side of the road and we could get together, that would be okay with me. <laughs> That's what I think. I'm not, I don't know. I'm not sure. All right, question. When you were alive, did you think that the people who were dead were alive like the people who were alive and thought you were dead? Or is it the opposite way around? You don't, you follow what I'm saying? All right, write that one down. I have one other thing to talk about. Oh, I should probably do a song before, before, we, uh, before we go, though. Shouldn't I? Shouldn't I? I should do, like I should do, I should probably do another song. I should probably do another song. And then we'll get back to this final piece of information, which, which I, I've, been think, I've been thinking about for a long time. Put it right there. Okay. What is it that you would like to hear? Oh, really? Okay, great. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have other things in mind. No, I don't, really. I have no idea what I'm going to play here. Except for the fact that... 
when we mentioned Vacation Bible School, all my guitars fell over, sort of antithetically, as it were. I don't know how that happened. So now it's sort of all out of tune. That's okay. So is my life. I can't do a whole song like that. Oh. Is that it? There it is. I love it. <laughs> I should wear this hat, right? Yeah. Oh, that definitely more funky did. Oh, that looks like uh, uh, Hannibal Lecter at the end of uh, Silence of the Lambs when he's like walking down the street in, in uh, Barbados or wherever. That's better. Okay. Bless my soul, what is wrong with me? I'm acting like I'm hanging on a fuzzy tree. My friends say I'm acting weird as a bug. I'm in love. More sugar. Well, wait, wait, wait. Well, oh, la, la. Such luck, I'm in love. I'm all shook up. Where, where? Do it again. Have you noticed, have you noticed, by the way, while we're on the subject, all shook up, that when you get the water bottles now, the water bottles, like, have this, like, rim around the top that they haven't changed from the old thing that they used to have, that used to have the cover uh, was a little bit bigger on top. The top thing, the cap, was a little bigger, and it would cover uh, the rim. In fact, it was a little bit bigger than the rim. So now when you get the water bottle, it's a little bit tinier on the top, but they haven't changed the rim. So that when you try and open your water bottle, now you're just going to slit your fingers in half because you're trying to get the damn top off because they're saving 15 cents on the thousand dollars <laughs> and if they think that that's profitable then they i mean we're drinking too much fucking water please don't ask me what's on my mind i'm a little mixed up but i'm feeling fine Ooh, well i'm all shook up baby Oh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> well, it's not 
not a bad ending to a pretty good show. A little shaky in the beginning. But Neil Young has been shaky all his life. So, something to aspire to. Thank you for tuning in from the VK Media Studios here in the Northeast. I want to thank my illustrious producer and director, Pat Maruki. Don McClay for taking some photos and walking through my shots when he's not supposed to. He's trying out, yeah, baby, going to replace George Stephanopoulos. Or at least go and stand in the back of him. I think we'll both do that. Look for us shortly, won't you? <laughs> bang, bang, you know, I'm going to shook up. Hey! That's a show. Thanks. Adios, friends.